going on everybody welcome back to phones and drones i wanted to go ahead and give you a quick tour of what's kind of different in the new 2020 standard range plus model 3 and a lot of it is very comparable to what priorly existed however there are minor tweaks and changes that obviously could change after this video is posted currently you can see we're running version 10.1 2019.40.2 and running this model right here uh, you can kind of see where we're at and first thing I want to call out on the control center is obviously your layout that you have you have the ability to turn sentry mode on and off um, right from the dash up here on this screen where is basically your rundown of some of your other clusters you have the option to turn on the rear view camera that you can actually use while you're even driving. This will so show you your battery consumption as well as charge time. And this is to activate the voice assistant. You have the ability to turn on and off your windshield wipers. You have an overview of your vehicle that'll show you your tire pressure as well. And then here, since your last charge, on your last startup of the vehicle, your miles, your time traveled, and also the WH per mile. Now addition, additionally, on the control center itself, if you guys are familiar with other videos that are out there, you will see one huge exclusion, and maybe it's just me personally, I've kind of harped on this in another video already too, you do not have an exterior lighting control for the fog lights. The fog lights do exist on this vehicle, and I do understand that they technically only come with the premium interior and all that, however, they are installed on this vehicle and there's no option to turn them on and off. Uh, minor inconvenience, I guess. I really do like the fog lights and the daytime running beams that are under that. Again, it's all actually hardware driven that is included. It's software that has kind of blocked it out. Hopefully they come out with an update and let us use those. I don't see the purpose of really, you know, they built it with the feature, not letting you use it. Hopefully down the road that will change. But aside from that, you can see how minimal the quick control screen is. Not too much. You have your exterior lighting, your adjustments for your mirror, and it'll tell you to use your steering wheel to do that for the right and left side. The auto tilt for when you are in reverse to see the ground and the mirror auto fold where it will fold in the mirrors when you walk away from the vehicle. Next are the lighting. And again, you can see here again, headlights. There is no option for your fog lights right there. You have only parking auto on and off, your dome lights off on and auto. And again, you have the option for high beam, headlights after exit and steering wheel lights. A lot of people ask what the steering wheel lights are. It is literally the arrows pointing left and right on the left and right side of the, 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 the ball control wheels. Nothing else to that. There's no other hidden lights that you can turn on and off. That's just one of the, the features. I don't even know why they give you an option to turn those on and off, but it's there. Next up, you have your locks. You can see you have your two key cards that come with the vehicle and any phone keys you have. Uh, it's my wife's iPhone is here as well as my Galaxy Fold. I haven't connected any of my other phones yet, um, but this is where I would do it. I would just add it, tap the key card in the bottom center console and link the phone. As far as the, as the display goes, you can have it set to this white background at all time, which is day mode or a black background, which is night mode or keep it on auto. I keep it on auto. I really do like the night mode, but it is hard to read um, some fonts on that darker display. Keep that in mind as well. The brightness for the display, auto, or you can use uh, the manual slider to change that if you'd like. Again, auto is kind of the way I like to keep it. Screen cleaning mode locks the screen. So when you are going and wiping it down to get all those fingerprints off that are uh, inevitably going to come up, you can just lock the screen. You don't have to worry about any extra taps you didn't want. You have your language you want to select, your time format, your energy display. If you want it in distance or percentage, you can see it dropped to 60% there or 148 miles. Totally up to you which way you want to have it uh, really displayed for you. One other quick call out too. You can see it's adjusting for easy entry right now. Technically, this is doing nothing to my normal driving conditions. If I was to tap the, the gas pedal, or excuse me, the brake pedal, you see it adjusted to my profile and now any changes I made will be saved for that as well. Then you have your miles or kilometers in distance. You have your temperature Celsius or Fahrenheit 
and your tire pressure if you want it as bar or PSI. On to the driving mode. On the standard range plus, you only have chill and standard. There is a third option, I believe, if you have a performance model for sport or something of that nature. Uh, it will appear right there. Your steering mode is comfort, standard, or sport. I leave it on standard. Uh, that's just the stiffness of your steering wheel and what you like it sitting at. Regenerative braking is how you can kind of restore some battery power while you're driving. It is a much more abrupt uh, braking than what you're typically used to in a regular gas vehicle. Uh, if you turn that to standard, it will automatically start stopping you automatically. And we'll talk about that in the next control. Regenerative braking on low means you will just not have as much of a noticeable stoppage. That leads us to stopping mode we were just talking about. You have creep, roll, and hold. Hold, whenever you are at a slow speed, it will actually put the car in a hold pattern. And these are typical in some of the other higher end cars. My Mercedes actually has it as well. You have to push in on the brake pedal, but this does it automatically for you. If you don't want it to hold, you can do roll, which is a traditional kind of, uh, it's a traditional roll. So when pedals are released, you'll gradually creep forward. And creep again is slowly moving when pedals are all released in general. I leave it on hold. I like that it maximizes the range by extending the regenerative braking at lower speeds. Then we have what Tesla is known for, navigation and autopilot. For autopilot, you can set your cruise distance on how many car lengths you would like between yourself and the next closest vehicle. Auto steer, navigate on autopilot's all here. Here is also where you customize your navigate on autopilot and you have it so it can start at the beginning of every trip you go on. Your speed-based lane changes, if you wanna keep them disabled, mild, average, or Mad Max. I like the instant decision making. I keep it on the highest setting, which is Mad Max. And then require lane change confirmation. I turn that to no. Lane change confirmation. I also turn that off as well. But you do have the option to have it chime, vibrate, or do both to let you know that it is going to change lane for you. Moving past that, we do have navigation, like we said. This is a neat feature. It does come on by default. It's automatic navigation where it'll automatically take you to and from work uh, at the time of day you usually leave or any calendar event when you have your calendar synced with your phone. Trip planner is very cool as well. If you're going on a longer road trip, you are able to uh, basically, you know, it'll, it'll forecast your driving pattern that should be used and it'll let you know where you need to add stops for superchargers to top up if you need it to get to your destination. Online routing, this will actually take real world traffic conditions into account while it's navigating and you can set it to when you want it to reroute for you. So this I have set to the lowest, actually one minute is the lowest option you have. So if you want to reroute and they have another route they find that'll save you a minute, two minutes, five minutes, uh, then it'll actually make that change for you while you're on navigation. I leave it at five minutes. I think that's a decent amount of time. If it's going to save me, I'll go ahead and go with. After that, you do have the option to avoid ferries, tolls, or use HOV lanes. I actually don't care if it doesn't avoid ferries or tolls. I have no problem with it using HOV lanes either. Then you have your safety and security. And in here, I do want to make one big call out. Uh, I have yet to use speed limit mode, but just keep that in mind. If you turn that on on the app on your phone or in the device, it will not let you go over 85 miles an hour by standard, but you can obviously adjust that up or down as you please. Now the call out is sentry mode. With the one of the newer updates Tesla rolled out, you have sentry mode, which obviously uses all the cameras around that it uses for autopilot to record footage for you if anyone gets close to the vehicle, or if you just wanna scare people off, it'll actually flash the lights. It will record if you have a thumb drive or a SSD drive in the, you know, under the dash, but, it comes on by default, and this has been known as one of the biggest battery draining features of Tesla currently. By leaving this on, it drains about two miles plus per hour of it being used. And if you're in a high traffic parking lot, like a mall or a shopping center or something like that, even at your office, depending on where you work and cars come and go very frequently, this will trigger sentry mode like crazy and that battery will be destroyed. So just keep that in mind. I leave it off right now unless I know I'm being a sketchy neighborhood and you want to activate it. You can do it right here again or from the app on your phone. So it's convenient just because it's off right now. You don't need to keep it off permanently. 
you have your service options. If you want to turn on wiper service mode, it'll actually angle up your wiper so you can clean from under them or make changes. You can adjust your headlights. This is where you need to go into if you want to turn towing on. God forbid you ever need that. This is to reset the tire pressure monitoring sensors as well. Factory reset, your wheel configuration, and where you'll find your owner's manual. And lastly is that software setting. Right now, this video will go up about a few hours after this email came out, but Tesla had an email they sent out to all Model 3 SX owners that do not have premium interiors, where now they are finally instituting that traditional subscription service for the premium connectivity. We are sitting here curiously wondering if we're going to get a new software update that's going to trigger that or if it's just going to come out uh, kind of like an OTA update. And in my case, with the standard range plus, we don't have that option for a premium interior unless you move it up to the next all wheel drive or the performance model. And personally, I do like being able to have the satellite and the, uh, excuse me, satellite and the traffic view. Hopefully this will come down very shortly and we'll be able to get that. But everyone's wondering if it's gonna be a software update or if it's just gonna be like a flip of the switch that Tesla provides. That service for the premium connectivity is gonna run $9.99 a month or $120 a year, basically. They're not giving you an annual option to pay for it yet, so it is gonna be monthly at this point in time. Having said that, those are all of your real main features of the display here. And then you do have your software update preference if you wanna keep it on standard or advanced. Rumor has it, if you had it on advanced for a while, you'd be able to get those updates sooner. However, it seems like that has kinda of gone away with the Dodo Bird and there's no real rhyme or reason to Tesla's rollout pattern for software updates. I'm leaving it on advanced, hoping that it will make a difference, but who knows right now. Also, this is where you'll see your release notes and what that version, uh, the update actually does offer, and you can see it's pulling up. So we got those new supercharger improvements that we can charge up to 170 kilowatts, adjacent lane changes based on speed. It's probably hard to see in this video, but it's actually giving you a lane to the left of your vehicle and as the example on autopilot going slower and has arrows pointing backwards, as well as the vehicles next to it gray. Uh, automatic wiper improvements, we know the story with that. Automatic lane change improvements, auto steer, stop sign warning. I'm super excited with this. Hopefully it'll go live sooner than later. Uh, I've heard it's really intermittent right now when it's recognizing red lights and stop signs, but I'll try to do a video later on about that as well. Hopefully we can catch that on video. Aside from that, obviously you do have your user profiles, the sentry mode that we're talking about. You see when I tapped it, it did turn red. We'll turn that back off. Your Wi-Fi settings, your Bluetooth settings, and that is all. You do have your option to go back to that other screen and see kind of Easter eggs here if you want by touching the Tesla logo. Nothing great here. I don't personally use any of this. You can turn your car into a sled and make it kind of Christmas themed right now. You can drive your car on Mars. You can have a fireplace, whoopee cushion, little Tesla arcade. But again, I really don't mess with any of those, but it's there if you guys want to. Additionally, you do have the ability to open and uh, basically open both your front trunk and your rear trunk, open your charger port. And obviously the other big to do is everything down here with your music settings, your calendar, camera, your energy consumption that we were talking about earlier. You're able to pull that and see your projected range 30 miles out. You obviously have your AC controls, your seat warmers themselves. This is probably one of the coolest features I think in this vehicle is how you can just drag up and over and split the AC vents as you would like. Um, one bit of notice too, the AC does run the battery down a lot more than if you just had your windows open. So get some fresh air instead of using this if you need. Next up, you do have your rear and front defrosters and your sound control. Obviously I have it muted right now. I don't want to get a copyright strike, but that's that. On the navigation screen, like I said, you do have your supercharging notices. So you can press that button and you can find details on what's going on at each of these superchargers if you need to go get your car charged faster. Also, it will pre, I forgot what they call it. They, oh, there we go. They precondition the battery, which means it is an ideal position for supercharging and it'll actually charge a little bit quicker than if you just pull up and try to get in on that. We'll go ahead and cancel that since we're not gonna head there now. And I can actually hear the car trying to precondition that battery. So we'll see if it goes away now that we're stopping. 
But that is it, guys. That's just a quick run through of everything you get in this monster dash display that Tesla includes on the Model 3 specifically. A lot of these apply for your X and Ys and probably the S as well. Granted, their screens are a little different and they have the two, but long story short, this is Tesla's operating system that they use. Flawless. I love it. I can't wait to use this car some more. But that's it for now, guys. Let me know if you have any other questions in regards to what we were going over, if you want to see anything else uh, that I didn't show in this video. Also, if you guys have gotten or subscribed to that new premium package and have gotten the traffic or satellite view, leave a comment down below and let me know. I'm very curious to see what is triggering that. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next one.